Captain and Pangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Gogh. And he brings it to ya! Creature features and all creatures. just doesn't seem to be of any decent quality. They won't care. They never do. But I care. I thought we were finished with showing low-quality films. We are. But you insisted on this particular film, and this is the best quality our distributor could find. Now please attend to your viewers. Oh, all right. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. With me is the dazzlingly devilish dame of the manor, the darling Miss Tangella. And over to this side is my butler, Livingston, whose sense of style, class, and sophistication is matched only by his appreciation for quality and craftsmanship. Except when it comes to the visual quality of the films we present here each week. Oh, not this again. It looks like it came off a VHS tape. It likely did. Why didn't the filmmakers merely create a Blu-ray DVD of this film? Because the technology to do so did not exist in 1970. Oh, forget about it. Oh, now that's an interesting point. Tangella mentions that anyone watching in 1973 was undoubtedly using an analog television which had a maximum resolution of 525 lines, which is only a mere fraction of the quality of regular 1080p HD. She also says that very few people had cable back in those days, so the vast majority of viewers were typically watching over the air with rabbit ear antennas, so the picture quality was even further diminished by normal broadcast interference and nearby vacuum cleaners. In any case, her point is that though the picture quality of tonight's film is not up to the standards we strive for here on Creature Features, it is likely far better than what it probably was on your television screens had you viewed the premiere when it first broadcast 50 years, 3 months, and 14 days ago. Oh, of course. And the name of that movie happens to be A Cold Night's Death. Starring Robert Culp, Eli Wallach, and Michael Gwynn. It has something to do with an Arctic research station and monkeys or some other nonsense like that. And joining us to watch tonight's film will be our old friend, horror director Jackie Kong. She'll chat us up about her new comic book series, tell us what she's been up to as of late, and chime in about the quality of tonight's film. Or lack thereof. So don't go away for it is to be another night of Arctic research fright. Right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. So, Jackie Kong, famous horror director, did you know that next Wednesday on ABC, Dr. Doolittle will be on? The original with Rex Harrison. Let's catch it. Yes, let's catch it. But not tonight, because we're not here to look at that. We're here to look at this, your new comic book. Yes. This is wonderful. Spend the night. It's a horror comic book. It is a horror comic yes. book. It's, it's lovely. No, no, no. We're going to put up uh, photos here, but uh, we're going to chat about this. And we're going to chat about uh, what you... You know, this looks like, you know, as uh, when I was looking at this, I think this is the storyboard for your next film. Mm, I wrote 20 issues. 20 issues? Yes, 20 issues are written. 
and I've already produced the first one, and the second one is wrapping right now, will be released in May. All right, we're gonna get into detail on this, but how have you been, young lady? It's been a while. It's and been I've too long. Way too long, I'm I good. assumed that you were off making your next epic. Well, I am. That's Spend the Night, my comic book. It's no, I mean film, you know, I picture you behind a camera, like one of those large Panavision kind. Mm, they don't use those anymore, but um, I am prepping this comic book to be a series. Uh, like a TV series? Uh, like, I think you no? will see it on, on one of the big streaming services, surely, because it is riveting. I've written 20 episodes right, already. Right. 20 issues, done. One already sold out. That's quicker than making films then, isn't it? Uh, much faster. And I'm right. working with artists. It's very much similar to uh, making a movie. I work with um, storyboard artists, I work with layout artists, I work with inkers, I work with colorists, um, letterers, and it's a very... And I noticed that you have process. a thing about the soundtrack for this comic book, which is in the back has a list of songs one must play. Yes, a playlist, which no one a, has done in a comic book. A playlist for a comic, this is, this is gorgeous. We're gonna talk in more detail about this. Let's talk about the film. Yes. A Cold Night's Death is what we're running tonight, 1973. Ah, can't wait. Let's yeah. watch it. You're familiar with this film. This is, uh, you were saying earlier, it reminds you of... Uh, it's kind of a, a TV ripoff of The Thing. Right, and, but, uh, but no, that's... it's not, because The Thing came out <laughs> after, right? I don't think so, no. Howard Hawks directed The Thing. The 1950 or the 1970 The black one? and white version. All right. John Carpenter did the version that everyone knows right. um, in color in the right. 70s. Right. Maybe late 70s, early 80s. I'm not sure exactly of the year. Nor but, do I. Yeah, but um, so this is kind of, I think that Spelling and those guys used to make these TV movies uh, with the TV actors, Robert Culp. Right. Um, and they were like very similar. I won't say, I guess I already said rip off, but no, they very do. similar to these films. In the motif of. Yes. Right. In the motif of the same exact story. Did you know? <laughs> Practically. Here's a fact you may not know. Robert Culp, the star of this film, is buried not more than 50 miles from here. Really? He's dead, you know. Well, I would I think I mean, they he did not be, bury him alive. I think he would be dead if no. they buried him First nearby. he died, and then they buried they him, but him they here. chose to bury him. He, I suppose well, uh, he was raised in the Berkeley area. Well, he, he's got, you know, this is a beautiful area. I flew in today, and I have to say it's really gorgeous. You may, I may move up here, and you'd have to, like... Should we bury get, you here as well? No, please. Bury me in Hawaii, please. Yeah, we can make you a plot. <laughs> In Bury the back me on no. Maui, please. You want to be on Maui? <laughs> yes. This is volcanoes. I could just see someday in the future when a volcano shoots your body up in the air. Yes, and I'll be just dust. We're all stardust. Baby. No, I think you'll land as a mummy in a Starbucks somewhere in Waikiki. <laughs> oh, horrible. No, no, I will be a shot out of the volcano in as dust and come down over the island. That's the way I see it. Oh, that'd be the, no, mm -hmm. that should be a, a service offered by the Hawaiian Memorial I Service was, I was just company. there. That should, they should offer that. Right. They should offer, I would right. sign up for that. Shoot me out of the volcano. Volcano cannon. Come down as stardust. Burial. Yeah. All right, enough All of right. this. Let's get to the film, <laughs> and when we come back, we're gonna talk idea. in detail about this, right? Yes, All I right. will explain more. Off we go, Cold Night's Death, 1973, Robert Culp, Eli Wallach, and a bunch of other wonderful people and monkeys. Don't go away, see you soon, bye. Today is our fifth day without radio contact with Dr. Vogel. Previous attempts to reach Summit Laboratory have failed because of continuing snowstorms. I fear for Vogel's well-being. Before we lost transmission, his radio contacts were becoming increasingly sporadic and irrational, to the point that he reported having conversations with such figures as Napoleon and Alexander the Great. I'm deeply concerned that he may not be feeding the monkeys and chimps, nor recording the results of our altitude experiments on them. If this is the case, the four years of research for the space program will have been wasted. Our promised delivery date is less than three months away and we must salvage the project. Doctors Robert Jones and Frank Inari arrived from the university this morning to relieve Vogel and continue the experiments. I am much relieved that this particular team was made available to finish the project, as it was their research in stress situations man might encounter in space exploration that is the basis of our program. 
The storm has calmed enough for Val Adams to fly them in along with a new chimp for experiment control. I must confess my deep concern as to what they will find.
Google? It's Adams, Val Adams. to death with the heat. The keys, the keys, where are the keys? So tell me, Jackie Kong, if you were not a famous horror filmmaker, would you work at an Arctic research facility with primates? Oh, I don't think I'd work there, but I want to go on a cruise uh, up there. A I've cruise? I've always wanted to go on an Arctic cruise. Oh, I've, I've been on be... one. You do not want to go. Not fun? Oh, God, no. Sort of like I did, and I the... don't mean to use any brand names here, but... That Related bad. to the love boat. That I took a cruise. <laughs> I'm I took gonna a cruise. go. No, I'm gonna go. No, I took I'm a cruise to Alaska. Me. I'm dragging you with me. You're oh, coming back. It was back. the most heinous you, thing. You, it you, was. I was on the voyage of the damned. <laughs> the 
That no, sounds no, no. great. I want to go on that. This I is a go true that, story. Please. It was full of senior citizens. Oh, really? Right. And this 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 mm, boat, this ship, yeah. had a casino. It had a disco. It had a nightclub. And I thought I was going to have wild away nights of fun. <laughs> they would they <laughs> would close them all at 4 p.m. <laughs> Because all the old people would go to sleep. Oh my God! No, then we, we should go to Miami. Two we'll people Miami. died. We go to Miami. Two people died. <laughs> oh my God. We go on this the Virgin is... Virgin Voyage Miami party boat down oh, to uh, with my luck, Key it'll, West. It'll be it'll be another voyage of the damned. <laughs> no, no, maybe right. you're right. Maybe a lot of senior citizens on that. We'll one get too. back to this movie uh, and her <laughs> urge for a cruise soon. But I want okay. to talk about this. All right, so they are going one eye Jenny, one eye Jenny, one eye Jenny, and all of a sudden. This ah. zombie woman appears. No, you, they are summoning the urban legend, One-Eyed Jenny. Well, she's obviously not a legend if she appears. Well, you never want, it's, it's like, um, uh, you don't want to ever say it three times. And you will never want to say it I three times. I just did. Oh my God, you've just summoned You mean it's a real thing? Jenny. It's a real thing. And oh now she will come and haunt you, my God. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. Tangela will come out and Yeah, you're going to need your first. crew no, to, not, to deal with her. I'm telling you, like she's like, uh, it, it wreaks havoc. That, you know? or, or this one. This one will come out and uh, perhaps. scold her. Perhaps. This you'll is wonderful. See. So your first comic book ever, and I have a signed copy. This is actual signature. Yes, right? that's worth 100 bucks online right now. They've sold out. And the first printing completely sold out, and they've... Uh, they've uh, $110. Anybody yeah. wants it, it's available. Right well, now. hang now, on to this it. This one's mine. It's going to be worth more than that. So how, what in God's name inspired you to get into this business? Well, I was, a f you know, telling a story is telling a story, right? right? And I wrote 20 issues, which were really in my mind were 20 episodes filmically of uh, this comic book. And... Um, and I never really thought about making a comic book. Wait, there's a step before you wrote 20, where you actually said, I want to do this. Not as a comic book, initially, no. Oh, so I this wrote, was going to be a film. I wrote it as a film. Oh. I, wrote, I wrote the first four of these episodes as a film, not even as a series, just as a film because I was bored. Okay. And I wanted to write a, this story, of this one-eyed Jenny, this urban legend. Right. And, um, and then I, you know... I put it away because you know there was not a, not a lot of production going on at the time. Right. And um, and then one night, this is a, you want to know how it came about. Yes. Keanu Reeves came to me in my dreams. The Keanu Reeves. Yes. And he came said, to you in your dreams. Make a comic book, Jackie. Make a comic book. And I said. Well, that's the weirdest thing. I, he's never been on my radar, I've, you know, at all. I've never really watched his acting. With if much, I might uh, say, I don't have a thing for Keanu Reeves, but I would think that if I was you and I had Keanu Reeves in my dream, it would not be about comic books. Well, that's what most people would think, but they're not Jackie Kong, right? right. So what happened was, I forgot about it, and the next thing I know, I went to Sasquatch Coffee on Melrose, and right next door is a comic book store, a very famous one called... Golden Apple. Right. And in the window was a picture of Keanu Reeves and his new friggin' comic book. No. Yes. So that's, I must have some... It was a premonition. Yeah. He's, he's making a comic book. I must make one. You should, if you have a story no, to tell. No, not me. You are thinking this. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yes. <laughs> yes. I should no. do that. And that's why he came to me in my dream. That's a great story. Is this documented in this... No, it is not. It is you not. You should but put you, that in Neil, there. Neil, that's one of the questions. <laughs> you, should, you should put so, that in here. Well, when I, when I give interviews, I did disclose it in one interview once we released the book. And, um, but weirdly enough, I take it back. He did cross my path days before when I almost hit his motorcycle uh, in, in front of Starbucks in L.A. And um, I didn't know it was his motorcycle, so I pulled in. So you would have hit it if you knew it was not his. Well, I was trying to get into this parking spot in front of Starbucks, and it was parked in front, and there was a spot there, and I zoomed head into the parking spot and almost hit the motorcycle. But then I thought, I can't get into it. You know how when you go into a spot and you can't quite maneuver? I think maneuver? you should just be riding and not driving. Yeah, exactly. Right, I should have been, right. you know, I'm always riding in my mind. So, so I back it. Back and forth with my daughter, I'm like, we're laughing, going, who drives a friggin' commando motorcycle? It was a commando. I said, I know motorcycles Comanche. pretty well. 
No, commando. 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 So yeah. I'm going, we're laughing at the motorcycle. It's all jet black and matte finish. And we're, I'm hitting it almost every time, five or six times I almost hit this motorcycle. And then, uh, and then I go into the Starbucks and they said, well, we, we just had a celebrity sighting. Keanu Reeves is sitting out in front. And mm -hmm. I said, oh, you mean, he goes, yeah, that's his motorcycle out. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so he's very cool. He didn't like yell at us for almost hitting the motorcycle multiple times. And he gets, he gets yeah. up and he goes to his motorcycle and he's wearing all black leathers, looking like really... You know, he, he knows how to operate the Matrix. He could have caused some trouble for you. He could have. He could right. have yelled, got up, because, but he My sat goodness. there very cool watching me nice. repeatedly almost Well, he could commando. just buy a new one if you smashed it. Apparently yeah. he owns this commando motorcycle company. Oh, well, if it's so, I guess I'm getting a signal we got to get back to the film, but okay. when we get back, we're going to talk some more about this. Uh, we're going to do mail first. So yes. Tangella's going to come and pull you out of the chair. Okay. And I suggest you pinch her. I'm ready, Tangella. I suggest you where, pinch where she? her when she does it. I, she doesn't I will. That. All right, off we go back to a cold night's death. We shall see you on the other side of the break with mail. And then when we come back from that, we'll be back with Jackie Kong. Don't go away. They're on an open channel. You want Alice? Where'd you find him? In the electronics room. Looks like a heart attack to me. He must have assumed he was locked in. He wasn't. He had his keys. The door was open. But he'd opened the store and window. God knows he knew better than that. I was supposed to try and get out. Let let the snow and the cold in. I guess he must have got hit when he tried to close it. Coffee? That's all I yeah, got. Yeah, thanks. We're just sitting there, frozen at the tape recorder, holding on to the microphone. He ran off about 300 feet of tape. I might tell you what he was thinking at the time. Look, I got about 15 minutes to get out of here. It's starting to come in pretty good. Thanks. Let me talk to Anari. Anari? How are the monkeys? Oh, uh, I haven't checked them. I, they're all right, I guess. But there's no sign of starvation or dehydration. They're just cold. You got a lucky break when the generator stayed on. There's a thousand watts of light in here, and that provided some of the heat. What about your animal? Now, he's just coming out of his drunk. I'd like that tape recorder. No. We need the recorder. We need the recorder. We transcribe all our work. Can you remove the tape? Send it out with Val. Not if he wants to hear what's on it. If it was 20 below in there, it'll shatter. If it was 20 below, the tape will shatter. Do it right then, okay? Let me know when it thaws. Val? You? Give them what orientation you can, then get out of there. Sum it up. Base out. You know about this radio? Okay, you got volume control, transmission key, power. No, it's okay, I know this one. Okay, generator, water storage tanks, hot water tank, water making vat. You gotta make your own water. You shovel snow through that flap into this vat. Now the hot water circulates through this tank, comes out that nozzle, melts the snow. Now it takes a lot, so you gotta shovel plenty. Now you open this valve, and it's stored in the tanks. Master keys are in the shop, so are the manuals if you have any questions.
believe this? Can you believe any part of this? I'll finish cleaning up the place. It's like, I don't know what it's like. It's not so bad. It's not so bad, you hermit. You would like it if it was a hole in the ground. You've got one this time, too. Oh, well, you got pots, pans, all the utensils. Food supplies are good. The stocks are ample. Well, we can get into this mess anyway. They told us to get into it. No. You answered the phone. You answer the phone too much, Frank. It's a terrible habit. Give it two stars. As opposed to what? What do you take, Robert? What do I take what? Beauty roster. Beauty roster? Now we've got to keep the place clean. Somebody's got to make up the beds, clean out the monkey cages, make the water, fill the, the tanks with... I cannot make the shot while you're talking. But I will. Make the water. You make the water, you take the water, and the butane. Now, who cooks? In the interest of mercy, you cook. Right, I cook, and who cleans? Well, that's always the guy who cooks. All right, I cook, and I clean. Robert, do you... Robert? Do you mind if we talk a little business? Go ahead. Well, let's, let's take Geronimo. I'd, I'd like to let him out of his cage. Let him run loose for a while. And I'd like to see how he adapts to being released from confinement. OK. Look, Robert. I like it here, Robert. I like the work. I like the analysis. You like to explore the unknown. I don't. I don't like going around in the corners into places I can't see. You do. Look, you like clues and all they add up to. That's what's been eating you, Robert. You've got no mystery to solve. They've taken all the pleasure out of it for you. They've done your job, but not mine. Work with me, Robert. Insanity didn't get Vogel. He died of boredom. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories.
Livingston, did you know that Channel 4 is running the Andromeda strain? I did not know that until this moment. Michael Crichton's thriller about an alien microorganism that decimates a town overnight and threatens the world. Starring Arthur Hill, James Olsen, David Wayne, Kate Reed. Wasn't she a, a pornographic actress, Kate Reed? I haven't the vaguest idea. I must be thinking of somebody <clears throat> else, not that I'd know. Anyways, uh, welcome back to the show. Let's do some mail, shall we? Bobby Smith from Harrodsburg, Pennsylvania. Bobby Smith. Do, do you think he'd mind if I call him Robert? I don't think he'd mind. I, 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 could, I suppose I could say Bobby. He's hello, not, hello, Bobby. That would be a but, policeman, wouldn't it? No, you it? know, I knew, I knew uh, a lad when I was young named Bobby. And he, he, was, he, was, he thought he was regal. He'd go, oh, I'm Bobby, kiss my hand. Yeah, it's terrible. I don't understand the logic of that. I did not either, but everyone beat him up after school. Not very nice. He got a pounding Did quite he? regularly. But I think all Bobby's better. All right. Hi, friends at Creature Features. Vincent and Mr. Livingston, all the best. Notice he said my name first. I like being in good company. That's right. Tangela is a lovely young lass who I have a crush on. But anyway, keep the great horror films coming. I watch you on YouTube and love any of the movies you play. I would like to request the film The Wolfman with Lon Chaney, the original film from the 1930s. It's a classic I would love to see. Keep up the great horror films. I love you, Tangela. Take care, XOXOXO, Bobby Smith. So, I, you know, I know he's not the same Bobby. No. I don't think the same Bobby would like... Uh, well, and your uh, Bobby would be from England, wouldn't no, he? It's a dog. It's nice. Uh, anyways, so, Wolfman. Uh, wouldn't it be lovely if we could show that film? Which one? The original Wolfman with Lon Chaney. The original? No, it'd be nice. So, uh, a thing that happens with the films is we can usually get these types of films, but only for broadcast. Only for broadcast. So, we couldn't show it here on YouTube where you watch us, Bobby, so it wouldn't do you much good. However, you could probably see it on Amazon Prime, right? Something like that. If you could find I it. Don't know. Anyways, thanks for writing, Bobby. Next up, Mr. Livingston. Michael McBride from Greenville, Texas. Michael McBride. Greenville, Texas. Greenville, Texas. That sounds like a lovely place. Green. I wonder if it's really green, though. It could be one of those illusionary names like uh, Greenland. Greenland it's covered is with ice. covered with ice. And right. Iceland is covered with green. That's right. And they may have done the same thing here. Mm. Yeah, it could be covered with dirt. All right. Oh, very nice writing. Uh, Michael McBride. He goes, Dear Creature Features cast and crew, my name is Michael McBride and I am from Greenville, Texas. Vincent, I want to let you know how much I and my grandchildren enjoy your shows. I look forward to each and every episode. I watch on your YouTube channel so I can also catch any past episodes. The delightful banter between you and Mr. Livingston. Is it really delightful? Is it banter? No, I, I think it's more like bickering or quarreling sometimes. I would tend to agree. Right, but let's, let's go with it. Uh, between you and Mr. Livingston, the always scary and funny Tangela. You know, she is scary, but the funny part is that she's not funny. There's nothing funny about her. No, she's, mm -hmm. no, people look at her in town and they go, she's funny. Right? And they say it like that, right? They don't go, oh, she's funny, ha ha. They go, oh, she's funny. Right? I see what you're saying. That's right. Uh, is uh, sometimes better than the actual movies. And uh, Paul Handy, oh, Handy, we should call him that. Handy. Always being picked on by Tangella is entertaining. Uh, I do need to comment on that. He does tease her. That's why she takes it out on him. I mean, it's, it's, it's the truth. And it's rather it's expensive. Now, here's a chicken and egg question. Which came first, the teasing or the beating? Good question. Mm -hmm. All right. Please keep up the wonderful job you all do. Also, please extend my sincere hello to the always stoic and perfect gentleman's gentleman, Mr. Livingston, and a special hello to the ever chatty Tangela. She's, she's very chatty. If you see her off camera, 
Never stops, does it? Never stops. Never stops. stops. All right, warmest wishes. Michael McBride, P.S. This is my first letter to you all. Well, thank you so much. We hope things are wonderful in Greenville. Greenville, Texas. Greenville, Texas. And uh, say hello to everyone in Texas for us, would you, please? Everyone. Next up, Mr. Livingston, a box. We have a box from Nancy with, Robito. With bees. A, a Patreon member. A box. From Portland, Maine. I like Portland, Maine. It's a lo oh, this is... It has some, okay. some weight and girth. It has density. And you've pre-opened it for me? Uh, this looks lovely. All right, I shall do this. I shall take a lovely card, and I shall pass this to our version of Vanna White. Yeah, Vanna White's nicer than you are. No, she is. She does not beat up people like you do. She does not blow up garbage bins. Who is Vanna White? Vanna White, she uh, does um, Wheel of Fortune. She's the, the letter girl. Oh. She's like our letter girl, but worse. All right, so, oh, look at this wonderful... Everyone has wonderful writing tonight. Did you notice? Yes. No, look at the penmanship on this card. It, they it lost looks, art. No, it looks like it was typeset. Hmm. Nancy. You know, I, every Nancy I've known has had nice writing. I think it's got something genetically to do with the name. I could be wrong. I don't know. All right. Dear Vincent Tangelo and Mr. Livingston, I recently joined your Patreon, and I will cherish the gift Tangelo sent me. The scene cutter and a great photo of the three. Oh, you got one of those. You know, the producers were wondering where all our uh, slates had gone. Oh, Apparently Nancy got one. Thank you so much for being a supporter. You know, if you want to, if the rest of you want to support us on Patreon, that would be wonderful. It covers some of the damage she does to Andrew. Patreon, easy. Anyway, so she goes on. They're, uh, they are on my wall. This is the first time I've ever joined a Patreon, and I've been so enamored with a show. But I love Creature Features. Well, we love you too, Nancy. I felt it only right I returned the gift I have been collecting and making things, and I found on the beach for years. I have a following, and it passes the long main winters. This is Nancy Rovita again, and I live in Portland, Maine. And for the record, Augusta is our capital. I didn't know that. Did you not? Know? Augusta, oh Maine. Look yes. at this. What is it? It's heavy. Paperweights. Yes. It no. Oh, this is. These Paper are weights. shells. She made this. Oh, this is wonderful. It's like a, like a, a thing. You look. You, no, you, you have to use your eye and you look. Uh, you looked? All right, I looked as well. All right, uh, let's see. Tangelo's gift is a sterling silver. Is sterling silver? What is your gift? Oh, it's like a necklace? What is that? Earrings? She's opening now. We're going to find out. Uh, Vincent's, yours is lead crystal. That would be this one. Uh, the shells, coral, and sea glass is all from beaches in Maine. I find cut and tumble as well as drill it all by hand. Tangela, if you ever find any sea glass, send it my way, especially if you want a necklace, bracelet, barrettes, picture frames, a small bowl, etc. I, I will make it for you. Uh, Mr. Livingston, I hope this adds to your collection. Much love to you all. Keep up the good work. Uh, love, Nancy. Uh, P.S. Still think you're a hearty Vincent. Oh, look at that. I got a compliment. No, I, I got a good compliment. Like, oh. No, oh, she called me a hottie. How rare. I'm going to read it again. P.S. Still think you're a hottie, Vincent. Yes, indeed. No, he was, he was chastising me the other day because he says, oh, that's lovely. He says that I do not get the love letters I once received when I was in the rock and roll music business. And he's right, you know, but that's all right. Because, uh, you know, the women who write to rock and roll stars are not as refined and wonderful as Nancy in Maine. Right? Good save. There's no save there. It's the truth. No, and the people, the people who watch horror films are not the same ones who bang their heads at rock and roll concerts. Headbangers. Right. No, they have brain damage, and the people who watch our show do not. We're like, no, we're the thinking man's horror show. That's what I was told once. Ah, by uh, whom? He doesn't believe me. We believe you, Nancy. Anyways, uh, any more? That's it? That's it. That's it? All right, if you'd like to send us mail or a package of your own, visit Hello. 
creaturefeatures.com. There you will find all the information you could possibly want about sending us something in the mail or by email, or if they want to use carrier pigeon. I understand that's an option as well, right? It seems to be a sport that's still alive. That would be a good one, would it not? All right, uh, we'll be right back soon with Jackie Kong, but first let's get back to a cold night's death. See you soon. I'm dropping the temperature on a specified time course, one degree every 12 minutes. Hey, take a look. Are you all right? Yes. Yeah, that's the altitude. Every shovel full of snow you think's gonna be your last. Well, take some oxygen. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. It looks comfortable enough. Yeah, I've scanned them pretty thoroughly. No excitability. And your aces? And caprices? No. <laughs> You've got a very nice, adaptable climb. Base to summit. Come in, summit. <laughs> oh, up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, bar's open. Five o'clock. The new tests you ran on the monkeys are really interesting. Okay. Reached any conclusions? Well, we still don't know the range of their tolerance. What's your projection? Frank is taking one of the little nitwits down to 15 degrees, now a degree at a time. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> you don't sound like you're making any new friends. Yeah. They're not too friendly. Are you still using the tape recorder? Yeah, tapes on everything. The equipment's working okay? What, the recorder? Yes. I don't know why Vogel's tapes came out blank. I just can't understand it. Any development with Geronimo? He takes food and water as offered. As a control, he wasn't necessary, but you know that. Uh, he's not telling us anything new. We got the autopsy on Vogel, by the way. It came in this morning. A little surprise. No heart attack. Hello, Summit? Base to Summit. No heart attack? Blood enzymes and arteries clear, lungs clear, no vascular disorder, no clots or obstructions. What's the rest of it, injuries? No broken capillaries, bones or veins, no internal bleeding. It's a clean pathology. I'm afraid that window got him. He froze to death.
I eat too much. I'm going to cut down. Well, it's not that there's any physical harm to it. It's a psychological factor. It's too easy to gratify. I'll probably cut down. It doesn't scan, Frank. Oh, well, you know, nothing ever does, does it? It doesn't scan. What's the trouble, Robert? Have you ever seen anybody frozen to death? There's a peacefulness that comes over the features, all the muscles in the face relax. It's just like going to sleep. I'm not very good at reading between the lines, I'm afraid. Well, Vogel looked like he was about to be bludgeoned to death. So. What are you talking about? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know what I mean. Listen, you can't ascribe an attitude to a dead man just because of what you think is on his face. Highly unprofessional. That's right. But just suppose for a minute, assume with me he was in physical fear. You can't make an assumption like that. Uh, you bought Adam's assumptions. Of course. Vogel was in the room, thought he was locked in the room when he had the keys in his pocket, that he would open the window knowing it was going to freeze him to death. That's logical? There's nothing illogical about it. He was psychotic. You said so yourself. You saw the place. He tore it apart. Now just suppose with me for a moment. Why did he go to that room? It's the only one with a lock on the door. He could lock himself in. But the door wasn't locked. He was going to open the window knowing that it would kill him? Why? He ran off 300 feet of tape while he was freezing to death. And it's blank. Well, there's nothing contradictory about that. Vogel just forgot to turn on the recording device on the tape recorder. That's why we didn't get his voice. No, that doesn't explain the window or the door. I don't think we've got it. It doesn't add up. I don't think we know how Vogel died. I, I don't buy that, Robert. It doesn't add up. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. There's a mistake in the thinking somewhere. It's small. It's something. I, I don't know. It'll turn up. I'll work it out in the shower. So, uh, Jackie Kong, filmmaker, isn't there a lot of chatter in this film? Well, I don't know what they're... Uh, I, I, let's just put it this way. I don't think they're going to survive. Well, that's just my premonition. No, that's, eye talking. no, that's because you're a horror filmmaker yeah, and you know not, how there's, these things there's, there's going to be a body count here. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about more like there's, they're continuously bickering in the kitchen. Well, that's just, a, like, just a pastime until they... There's right, like, the dust. They're like an old married couple. Could be. What? Yeah. Anyways, we'll get back to this film in a minute. Um, you've got things to show. You, you're going to show me the, the behind the scenes of making a comic book. Yes, right? I wanted to tell you how complex it is. It was right. surprising to me how many stages and how many people are involved with making a comic book. Right. You would think a simple comic book, but initially I have write a script, right. and then it's broken down into a layout. Oh, which is a very simple kind of stick figure, more advanced than stick figures, but This an looks idea. like it was sketched in a Denny's at yes. 12 p.m. on a napkin. That's right. And then that sketch, that thumbnail, goes to, once I lock it down, right. it goes to an inker. Oh, that looks much nicer. Yes, and this right. inker does all the detail that... Um, Let me compare. Yeah, you'll see the difference. And then oh we go through several stages of inks until I approve they're it. They're very close, though. Mm -hmm. I can see, if I hold this up to the light, they're quite similar. Yes. Right? All right. And, and the then next one. once it's okay, then it gets colored by my colorist. Oh, and, wow. And uh, I have a very talented crew. Um, uh, the colorist is 
not even in the United States. He's actually in another country. My ink artist is in Chicago, and his name is Don Cardenas. Let me see this the one. The colorist is in Paris. Oh, he's in Paris? Yes, he's in Paris. He was in Serbia, but now he's in Paris, and I'm working with him on the second book Oh, this book is lovely. Now. And then once I okay the colors, it, the dialogue that I wrote in the script then gets placed oh, in by the right. letterer, Joel Rodriguez. And that then, once this I... Is, this is more complicated than making a film. It's like making a film. It's really the stages. This is why I think I'm uniquely qualified right. for making a comic book because they couldn't believe, these are all comic book artists, how I understand what the end product will look like. It's because right. I do that with film. I know what it's going to look that like when it, at the end. That's amazing. But it's done in very particular stages. Um, and each stage, sometimes I go through sometimes 10 to 12 revisions on each stage before it gets to the next stage. Because so, you're a perfectionist. Because I'm a perfectionist. Oh, I, I am too. Yes. Well, you say we get back to this film. Yes, let's, let's catch and see what let's happens do it. to these All guys. Right. Off we go back to a cold night's death, and hopefully there'll be less talking and more what? monkey business. More action. We need more action. See you soon.
Frank? Frank? Get the generator. I can't get it started. My name's Vicki. I'm 57 years old, and I'm from Friendsville, Maryland, in the United States. I'm watching your show on YouTube. I love these shows. Maybe you can find an old movie I used to watch called Raw Head Rex. Thanks. Bye. Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have the desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Ms. Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. You know, at the commencement, I was complaining a bit about the quality mm. of this 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 film. I think they shot it on 16 millimeter film. Quite possibly, quite possibly. Or, you know, I think that uh, 
16, you know, th these were these low-budget knockoffs that were made in the, that period. So they would not spend the f money on 35 like you would have used, right? right? I shot all my films on 35 and um, right. started on Super 8 when I was a teenager, making Super 8 movies, and then was gifted a 16-millimeter camera. No, really? On my 18th birthday. My goodness. By Marlon Brando. I think I told you that story. Marlon before. Brando gave I you a camera. I told you that story. Yeah, he surprised me. It was a, I was crying because everyone forgot my birthday. I was 18, and he called. He was calling my mom, and he goes, what's wrong? Because he, he was an actor, and he could hear that I was right, upset. Right, right. And he said, uh, what's wrong? I said, it's my birthday. And I, nobody remembered my birthday. Oh, my goodness. And he said, oh, no, no. We remembered your birthday. There's what a, kind of camera was it? It was a Beaulieu French camera. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful Beaulieu 16 millimeter camera was delivered because he had, he was like planned a dinner for me in, at Trader Vic's in Beverly Hills. So he said, oh, no, no one forgot your birthday. There's a dinner at Trader Vic's for you. So I invited some friends. Marlon Brando threw you a birthday party. My 18th birthday party. And I, he, I, this is really weird because he, he, he had such a fit that I was making Super 8 movies that he was... Um, saying that, you know, I don't want any of the kids in uh, the movie business is a crappy business full of whores and... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, it was very, like, against the business. I mean, the, the, the movie business itself. I mean, he was a fabulous actor and right. clearly one of the best Well, he in wouldn't the world. even accept his own Academy right. Award. He didn't like the business. Right. So it was odd then there uh, that... And I invited my high school friends and... We had this round table and suddenly a big box arrives and it's a gift, big box, and it said on the card, a gift from a secret admirer. And I thought to myself, well, who the hell? And then I turned it over and it said, whose name happens to be Marlon Brando? Because they, he told them to write secret admirer, but they couldn't resist. <laughs> you saved all this stuff, right? No, I threw it away. I, I, I threw it what about away. about the camera? I, didn't, I, I sold the camera to make a movie. Um, because I didn't know how to operate a 60 millimeter camera. You are wrong, camera. Jackie Kong. I rent 35 millimeter cameras that are completely perfectly calibrated. Yeah, you were you were gifted a 16 millimeter camera from Marlon Brando, By and that you told me that owned it. The, 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 he told me the business was a terrible business. I wasn't doing it for the business. I was doing it just like my comic book. That comic book is pure purely a work of art, working with artists. It's not about- Oh, you're trying to change the subject because yes. I'm pointing to you how silly you are. <laughs> that comic book is, I, you do it for the right reason. And, and, and I got rid of the camera because I didn't, you know, to own a camera, you have to maintain a camera. And I didn't know how to maintain a camera. I don't believe a word she's saying. And you have to saying. buy lenses. Not one. You have to buy the whole gear. It's not just the camera. Well, I'm it's sorry, Miss Filmmaker, but welcome <laughs> to the business. I suppose, but- All right. You're, you're being silly, and we're going to get back to this film. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what you do with 35 millimeter camera. Yeah, and I want to see if they actually survive this uh, Arctic freeze. Uh, you, already, you already said they're going to die. I think they're going to die. Yeah, she, I think they will die. She wants everyone to die. Yes. All right, we'll see you on the other side of the break. Don't go away. <laughs> I'd like to know. Last night. I'm not accusing you, it was an honest error. I did not touch the heat, and I never went near the generator. I saw you, Robert. You went downstairs. If you were awake, then you heard the monkeys raising hell down there. No, I didn't. Well, I did. 
And when I came down, there was one light on in the electronics room. Did you use the medical analyzer last night? I haven't touched the medical analyzer since we got here. Well, it was turned on. And the window was open in the room. Snow was coming in from the outside and melting on the floor. When I went over to close the window, the door began to swing shut on me. You open the window, the dress, shut the door. I'm going to open that window at 2 o'clock in the morning when the temperature is 20 below. You don't see the pattern. I don't see the pattern. What pattern? To what happened to Vogel. Robert, you're so turned on about this thing, you can't think of anything better to do with yourself. It could cost you your life messing around like that. Base station to Summit Laboratory. Come in, Summit. February 14th. Evening radio transmission with base confirmed snowstorm. Third in two weeks. Food deprivation tests started AM. Subject monkeys, Freddie and Richie, placed on quarter rations of food and water. Symbiotic relationships disrupted by mid PM. Mutual hostility accompanied by anger and aggression. Continuing dependency behavior of Geronimo since AM fright. Exactly running the table. Frank, I'd like to talk to you. All right. <clears throat> Everything you said about me is true. I don't like this kind of work. I, I bloody hate it. It bores me and I get depressed. But I'm a professional, Frank. I don't play games. Robert, those were careless. I know you. You can't stand a mystery, uh, anything that can't be immediately explained. I don't understand why you continue to worry. That... Because you know I didn't go near that heat last night. I wouldn't touch the generator, and I never would have opened that window. Who did? Vogel found himself somehow in that room. I found myself in the room. The window was open on Vogel, the window was open on me. The door closed on Vogel, and it was closing on me. Now, Robert, I've been very patient with when you. When we got here, the heat was turned off. This morning, we woke up, and the heat was turned off. Deranged perception, delusions. You're running 140 degrees. There's something here, Frank. Vogel knew it. Listen to you. Excessive, unreasonable accusation. Conditions as you want them to be. What, what is it that's are? being uncovered here, Frank, that doesn't want to be uncovered? Robert, I don't want to discuss this with you. Not for another instance, you understand? That's fine. This is very interesting, Robert. The action factor of the monkeys doesn't always add up. I mean, there are certain inconsistencies. You know the way bacteria develop immunity to certain antibiotics? Well, these animals seem to have developed an immunity to stress. They appear to stress, but I'm not so sure. Robert! Are you going to drop this and come to your senses? Coyotes survive at this altitude. Pronghorn sheep and certain rodents. Eight orders of insects and three species of birds. That's all. This place is not being bombarded by barometric phenomenon of cosmic forces. There's nothing unnatural here or supernatural. There's just you and me. You really believe that? That nothing peculiar happened to Vogel? 
wrong from it. You don't share my conviction? You don't share my concern? You haven't for a minute, as long as we've been here. I want to hear you say it, Frank. Robert, I don't know what the hell is going through your head. It's the altitude. You're ludicrous. I mean, take a look around you. If there was what, something wrong, I'm not an idiot. I'd go over it with you from stem to stern. I'd tell you. All right. Now, these are the laboratory workup sites here. Before and after. This is a food deprivation workup. Repeat procedure. Enzymes. Protein. Urine. Where's the blood analysis? Uh, I'm coming to that. I'm, I'm going to run a count in the lab. Well, that'll take days. Well, I've left room for it. I'll fill in the results. Well, why waste time with counts? Why don't you use the medical analyzer? It'll run the whole assay in 15 minutes. I'm trying to collate the human constitution with behavior. Why don't I'm you not... use the analyzer, Frank? You haven't, have you? Not since we've been here. Because it's in a room where Vogel died. You haven't set foot in that room since the day we found him, have you? Why? What could there possibly be about that room that would bother you? You don't share my conviction. You don't share my concern. You'd tell me if you did. But you have told me, my friend. Frank? Frank, for God's sake. Is that my water bottle? You didn't spit in this, did you? anything you notice it's three o'clock in the morning <laughs> shut the machine off Robert all right you can put him back in his cage put him back in the laboratory it's all right maybe we analyzed all wrong you take this animal for example compare him with what we did for example we demonstrate the fear hypothesis the fear stimuli produces radical physiological changes rage hyperventilation accelerated pressure and pulse Extreme fear abolishes or interferes with a normal pain reaction. Maybe what we had yesterday was not a normal adaptation at all. <laughs> Maybe what we have here is hypoesthesia, reduced sensitivity to tactile stimuli, producing a partial tonic immobility. You don't like that, Robert, do you? Look at your face. Maybe now you understand how it feels. Hypoesthesia, hypersensitivity. I don't know what the hell you were talking about. I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about, Robert, and no bull. You're experimenting with me. It's not the monkeys you're working, it's the monkeys and Anari. 
Every time I turn around, the light's left on, the window is open, the door ajar, heat. I understand. No, no I understand. Maybe that, that's the way you go about doing things. Maybe that's the way you like an experiment set up. But it's me you're experimenting with. Now, why don't you be honest? Come out and tell me so. I'll, I'll accept it. I want to find out what's going on here, and I want to find out tonight. Okay, Frank. All right. Uh, let's get a good night's sleep first. Huh? Let's both get a good night's sleep, and we'll uh, thrash it out over breakfast in the morning. Oh, that, that's terrific. That's terrific, right? That's terrific. up here. We're running a hustle. Scientist discovers abominable snowman in high altitude research center. That's the car, isn't it? You fraud, you fake. You genius has never arrived. You're not a man to be trusted. You never have been. Selfish, no morals. If you think you're going to buy yourself some kind of immortality with this, why is it you've never done great things in the world, Robert? What's the matter? What's wrong? It isn't for want of ambition, feeding off other people's talents. That's why you've had it in for me. I've been your meal ticket. No more, nothing. No more. We're through. I'm a scientist, at least. Through. My idea. We shouldn't have let him run. He he probably got angry with me because I wouldn't. It, Robert.
This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Well, this movie is really keeping me up. Oh, it's not keeping my hair up like yours. <laughs> How, what's your secret? Oh, God. You have to wrap the hair. How is that Lots it? of hairspray. And oh, I don't I, want to do that tonight. <laughs> rat it so, and maybe throw a bump it in there, too, while you're at it. I, well, I need to look into that. That's what I So, have. Eli Wallach. <laughs> Good actor. Womp, womp, womp. He was in that movie. He's a really good actor. They've got, you know, these guys pepper these TV movies with good actors. You know, they do. They pepper it. That's how know. they get them in. That's yeah. how they get the, the, the butts in the seats, right? Yeah. That's the term, right? That's a Hollywood the term. butts in the seat. Butts yeah, that means seats. an audience. Get an audience. Right. Get their butts in the seat. Right. And Eli Wallach, you know, he, he's like, I, I could not imagine him being like a scientific type. Person well, I cast Martin Lando as a scientist in my first movie, The You Being. did? Yes. And um, we will... T I like him. You know, he was he was in command of a, a moon base. And, you mean... Martin Lando. Was he really? He was? I didn't know that. Yeah, he was Commander Koenig. Ah, I, I loved working with him. He's, he was really a nice, hilarious actor. If, if he wasn't an actor, a serious actor, he would, should have been a comedian. Oh, really? Always cracking jokes. Oh, cracking how fun. Jokes. Yeah. Funny, 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 like a no, cat's He still. never did that on the moon base. No, he no. normally is very serious. Right. This is why it's, uh, right. it's, it's it was uh, surprising that he's so but funny. But he was good in the Ed Wood film. Uh, yeah, he was right. great in Ed Wood, and um, he was good in my movie. He was so generous, um, really helping the other actors that were less experienced. And, and uh, he, But he did tell me that... Uh, the lead actor in my first film was the worst actor he'd ever worked with. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> is, well, he told this, you and not him. No, he told me because he was trying to help him. Right. And um, it, the guy, he couldn't make eye contact. It's very important in oh, acting to make right. eye contact, right. to actually be able to look at who you're talking to in the yeah. eye. Right. And uh, his, he kept blinking and looking away. Oh, so maybe he had some kind of infection Maybe it was a condition. Maybe it right. could have been a condition. It could have been hay fever. Livingston gets it all the time. <laughs> no. I, he's here doing the mail one time. I thought he was crying. Like, we he got a sad letter in the mail. And it turns out he just had hay fever. Hay fever. So That's he wasn't right. sad. So right. maybe that was it. Well, what do you say we wrap up this film? Yes. Let's, let's finish it up. We're going to wrap up this film. And then uh, when we come back, um, we'll have Tangela and we'll get her opinion of the film. And uh, we'll uh, find out how people can order these, right? Yeah. Great. All right. Off we go to the end of A Cold Night's Death. Do not leave when you see the movie credits because it's going to be silly if we come back after the credits and you're not there and we're sitting here. What are we going to do? We're just going to be looking at them going, oh, they're gone. Yeah. Stick right? around. We'll have nothing to say, right? So stick around and uh, we will see you after the credits. See ya. Well, you take a shower now if you like. I don't need a shower. I, I... On the other hand, if you don't care for a shower, I don't take one. Don't use a tin cup, Robert. It'll burn your mouth. Here, you use the plastic one. Dinner will be ready in about half an hour. I managed to save most of the food. He really shredded it. You have to go out again? What's more? Well, you've been in and out all day. That's true. Then you do it. Oh, Robert, I didn't mean... It's 20 below out there. You can't take more than 15 minutes at a time. Yeah, I understand you.
Look, I, I want to talk to you. Okay, talk. Robert, I'm sorry. Well, forget no, it. No, no, let me say it. Let me say it. I, I got hot and frightened. All those things you were bringing up. It's interesting. It was logical. But, but it got me going there for a while. I must admit, I, I thought you really had something there, but damn it, Robert, put yourself in my position. I'm, I'm a scientist. I like things in their proper order. I, it bothered me. I could see that you had a point when I thought about it. But it's hard to go from A to B to C. I don't know. And there's that Vogel business. Maybe Adams was right. No, but that doesn't explain the window and the door, Robert. And there must be something there. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it, Robert. We'll find it. I know, we'll find it, Robert. It's got something to do with the names. Names? What names? You were there, we were both there, we both heard it the same. It's something to do with the monkeys' names. I don't understand what you mean. What names? Will you, uh, turn the water off down there? Are you okay, Robert? Are you really okay? Just take your shower. Julius Caesar, they're only in Dr. Cocker's.
I'm not going to use this, Robert, unless... I'm going to ask you simply, Robert, I want you to go into the electronics room. All right. I'm going to lock you in there, and I'm going to radio horn up. I couldn't have done this, you damn fool. All right, I'll, I'll go and bring down your bedding, Robert. I didn't. I'm not feeling well. Lock myself out, All right. I want you to come along, Robert, please. Who did? Please. You, him, for once in your life, face it. Face it. We took food away from the monkeys. The food is taken away from us. It's no good, Robert, no good, no good. Subject the monkeys to fear, and we're subjected to fear. Oh! No! You did it. You did it. Put them in isolation, and we become isolated. You've done all the damage you're going to do. Subject them to cold, and we are subjected to cold. I'm not going to let you walk over here anymore, Robert. Spell it. Yeah. Everything that has happened here to us happened before. No, you're, you're going Vogel. out of your mind, Robert. You're going out of your mind. Look at you. you. You're becoming Vogel. Being made to become like him. Oh, dear God. Vogel told us the truth. He told us that nobody... Listen. He told Horner I had conversations with Alexander the Great. What are their names? Julie, Nappy, Alan, Alexander the Great. Everything that we have done to them, they have managed to do to us. Pray, don't you get it? No, please. No, it's the monkey. <laughs> And that brings a close to a cold night's death. The monkeys are running the show. Looks like it. It's like it's like the governments of most countries, right? Mm. Yeah. What yeah. did you think of the film, Love? She liked it. Yeah, you know, she likes playing the apes as well. Ah, uh, you like monkeys. Yeah, it's not so much the monkeys, it's it's the fact that the humans lose. Mm. She likes that part. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. probably yeah. the way it's going to go. It's an okay film. We will only show this film again if, if we find a suitable copy. This hmm. one was too crunchy and dark. And I like good quality. Maybe they need to go back to the original negative. Yes. But I bet you it doesn't exist. Maybe. Anyways, enough of um, that. Uh, what are you doing next? 
What's next for you besides comic books? We are doing, I am swamped with the comic book. We are right. doing issue number three coming up this summer. I'm doing nice. some of the comic cons. I'll be in Long Beach for the comic con there. Wonderful. I was in New York Comic Con and I've been signing at comic book stores, so meeting the fans. Oh, wonderful. It was really, really wonderful to do that, actually. Right. I, I like uh, meeting and seeing how it impacts them and how much they enjoy it. Plus, they, they give you the feedback that yeah. you might use in a They future. love the music. Right. The music score is like, no one's ever done it, That's done so on fun. a comic book. So it's like blow away. It's like sitting in a reading and having this whole visceral experience. I imagine in the future, like they'll be able to put the actual music player inside the cover. Well, it, with practically tiny speakers. you can do that because all I, I hid QR codes all over the book. Right. All you do is take your phone yeah. and you play the music while right. you're reading. Right, but I'm talking about like the, the, the scientists at the comic book factory could invent tiny speakers. You know what? You are full of good ideas. I'm full of something. Yes. For That's sure. <laughs> All right. How can we find out more about Jackie Kong? Oh, uh, you can find out more if you Google Spend the Night Comic Book. Um, Google Spend the Night Comic Book. But do you have a website, right? Yes, I have a website. Um, JackieKongDirector.com. JackieKongDirector.com. Because you direct. That's why. That's right. And right. now I'm a comic book creator. I've moved from cult film director to comic book creator. And, um, it, and it's, it's having a lot of fun with it. Right. So uh, oh, I'm signing one for you. The autographed versions are already oh, sold out. Yes. No, no, no. You're autographing two for us. We're going to keep yes. one, and we're going to give one for one of our wonderful Patreon people. Oh, great. Right. Right. Wonderful. So that'll be wonderful. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'm looking All right. forward to it. Thank you so much, Jackie, for coming again. Next time you're in town, you make sure you come see us. I will. I love coming to see you. And uh, as far as you guys go, thank you so much for staying up and watching this this film with us. We, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did not, at least we hope you enjoyed Jackie. I did. You did, right? And her spongy thing. And uh, next week, uh, we've, got, uh, we've got Star Wars playing and uh, George Lucas as a guest in our film next week now. All right, all right. There'll be something like that. And, and uh, in any case, uh, have a wonderful rest of your weekend and we'll see you next time. So, uh, Jackie. Yes. Um, you know, I'm thinking on your next comic book, you should make a character in the comic that's like me. Hmm. I don't think my inker has enough black.